Hey everybody, this is Jeff from uh, Build an Aquarium Workshop. And today's episode, we're going to show you how to build a reef tank uh, using this 40 gallon rimless cube. Uh, this tank has actually just been resealed, so we're going to we're taking advantage here and reset it up. It was set up here for four years and it had the clear silicone on it and it started leaking on one side. It's probably like a six year old tank. Uh, that was moved up here from another location we had. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set it up as a show tank. So we have lots of corals in uh, this tank here and in what was in this tank when it started leaking. There's a bunch of corals in this uh, big green bucket down here, uh, which ha were put temporarily in a 20-gallon high while this tank was resealed. So we used the black, uh, the shop, only they had the black silicone, so that's what they put on it. It looks quite nice. I think, instead of the clear silicone. Um, but anyway, so this tank, we're gonna go ahead and we have tons of sand for it. So what we're gonna do is we've got a bucket here of, of the original sand that's been sitting around for like four years. It's, uh, it's, it was cleaned out, so it's still nice and clean. We're gonna put that in the, in the tank and then we're gonna come back and show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna fill it up with water, okay? So first, okay, so here's step one, scooping the sand. We have an old fish container that's cracked. Doesn't, it leaks water, so this is really perfect and ideal. Uh, Tupperware, some type of scoop that you can use for scooping sand. So we've got a whole bucket of sand here. Um, can't remember what kind of sand it is, but it was a, like a marine sand. So we're just gonna scoop it, and we're gonna put it in the tank. And we've got quite a few pounds of it. We're gonna make this a deep, deep sand uh, aquarium. So we're gonna want at least like a, probably like, between two to three inch layer of sand. Okay, so that's what it's that's what it's called. There's different ways to set up reef tanks. Uh, there are uh, different. We're going to set this up very low budget. We have a canister filter. We don't have a sump, so we don't have like a refugium or anything like that, which would be nice. And eventually, I'd like to set it up with a refugium uh, and an overflow box. And you know, if we do that, we're going to show you that. But for now, um, we just have a canister filter. We have a backpack skimmer that we hang on the back. Um, and we have a couple of light, uh, LED lights that we use, uh, a submersible heater, and, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and, and a power head or two and to create the circulation in there. Uh, the, pop, the canister filter creates quite a bit of flow. So when we have the canister filter on, sometimes that's how we alternate the flow on a reef tank. We can put the canister filter. Some days we might have a power head cross the, you know, do some cross flow. Or we might just have the power head on, or maybe two power heads instead of the canister, because we don't have to run the canister all the time. We do run the skimmer, especially after heavy feedings, uh, to capture any um, extra proteins. And we can talk about that later once the tank is all set up. But for now, I gotta get back to scooping so we can get this done and show you what it looks like when it's done, okay? All right. Okay, so we put in our sand bed and, and measured it, it's almost three inches, okay? So deep sand bed. Uh, before I talk about the sand bed being deep, what it's good for, real quick, uh, the the nice thing about this tank is that it's a uh, these rimless tanks. Um, maybe not all of them, but this one was advertised with low iron density for super clarity. <clears throat> I could say it is a very clear tank. Um, I don't know if I noticed a big difference between that and some of the other uh, the framed tanks, the older tanks that have been around, but. Uh, that's as they advertise them. So a lot of these newer tanks are supposed to be supposed to have better. Uh, you're supposed to have better vision, be able to see better. Uh, uh, we're gonna. I want to also mention that we're gonna do soft corals in this tank. So we're not doing uh, hard corals. A lot of those corals uh, need pristine water at all times. Uh, we we grow things that sometimes the water doesn't have to be that great, like uh, pink pulsating zinnia. They love. I don't say dirty water, but they love water where it's it's not pristine. It's not that great, so um, that's okay. So that that's that's the kind of stuff we grow. We do a lot of the euphelia corals, like frog spawn and hammer and things like that. We do a lot of zoanthids and pellies, which are really cool. Those guys and 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 corals that you can feed or not. A lot of corals will just utilize the light, but some corals, you know, we do have uh, reefroids, which we use as well as you can do some hand feedings. We don't have any pellets. We're gonna try that. But we do have like brine shrimp, things like that, that we could, formula one that we could feed. Next, we're going to put in the RODI water. Uh, but before I do that, the sand. So the sand is deep bed. Now we say, well, why do I want to put a thick bed of sand in an aquarium? Well, you know, what an inch do, just as fine. So the deep sand bed is good. Here's the thing. With corals, unlike fish, nitrogen is 
especially the end product of nitrogen, which is nitrate, is very, very deadly to corals. Not so much to fish. And to get rid of nitrate, you do water, do partial water changes. And like, so when you feed, instead of that nitrogen cycle occurring, where things get broken down, the protein skimmer will skim out a lot of the potential waste that will become nitrogen, okay? So that way, the corals won't get a big dose of nitrate, the end product. Now, the thing about the deep sand, what I learned about that is, is that bubbles will form in there. And what you do is you take your hand and you stir it and you'll see the bubbles come up and it kind of smells like uh, rotten eggs, sulfur, and that's nitrogen releasing itself into the atmosphere. Okay, those little bubbles, it's nitrogen bubbles. When you release that, they go up and they release as a gas into the, to the atmosphere, okay, into the air. And so that, you're getting rid of nitrate, which again, the corals don't like nitrate. It's deadly to them. So that's why we're using a deep sand bed. We're still gonna have, we're still gonna do partial water changes and we're still gonna have the canister filter on there, still gonna skim out uh, as well. So it's not like uh, we're not doing anything but having a deep sand bed. You actually still need some type of filtration and a skimmer. You always wanna have a protein skimmer with reef tanks because you wanna be able to have that potential where you can skim out uh, any organic pollutants things like that uh, to get that out of the water, okay? So next step is the RODI water, which I make, I have an RODI unit, RO meaning reverse osmosis, DI meaning deionization unit, okay? So in that, you basically get pure water at the end of it, which is perfect, because that's what we want to start. If we are gonna do any additives, we can do that afterward. And I'll show you how I use C-Lab blocks that I use to put in like trace elements, uh, make sure that calcium levels are high. In the beginning, we don't have to worry about that because our salt, our synthetic salt that we're using with the RODI creates the perfect environment and there's nothing in it. It'll be perfect, perfectly clean, and we can throw the corals in like right away as long as the temperature, salinity are right, and we'll go through that when the time comes. So for now, we have a bucket, a bu sorry, we have these five gallon jugs of RODI. We gotta throw that in the tank we are going to mix our salt. So we're going to we're going to do the RODI as fresh water. Then we're going to take our bag and we're going to throw in salt and mix it. And then with our hydrometer, we're going to make sure that the salt is right. It's the correct um, uh, specific gravity and the temperature. So we have a, a few things to to get done before we're able to put the corals in there. Okay. So that's what we're going to do next. And okay. So this rock right here, I called it reef rock. I'm using it in the Tanganyika cichlids. This, is, this rock is actually perfect too. I, I was using this before in this tank. So this, this rock is perfect. Uh, you can crush it up you know, with the little holes and crevices. You can put plugs in there. Um, you can you know, hammer or drill it out, put plugs in there, let the, the corals grow over it, which looks nice. So we've got just a few pieces of that, which we'll put in this aquarium. We're trying to create like a, a nice center piece for it. And we'll be attaching our corals to these to make it look more natural. We won't be using any any egg crate, nothing like that. Anyway, when you go to your fish store, you know, you're gonna ask them, hey, I want some rock for my reef tank, and then they'll have hopefully different options besides the live rock. The live rock, you should be able to get it from different places. There was Marshall Island rock, T Tonga, uh, Fiji. I think now a lot, a lot of places, you can't get some of that rock from anymore. Uh, it's from their protected areas uh, because of the way things are going with reefs uh, dwindling. So I think Fiji is the big, Fiji rock is the, the big rock that you can get a lot of uh, out there. But you know, check with your local store and they'll show you what live rock they have. But you can also use rocks such as this, uh, two for rock as well I've seen. Um, okay, so we are back. We have filled up the water to about here. Uh, we are gonna add some live rock, so we probably won't have to fill it up much more. Uh, but it's before we can put in any live rock um, and or corals, we're gonna have to go ahead and put in the salt. So we have a bag here of Coral Life. That's the brand we're using today. I usually use Instant Ocean. I've used Red Sea, I've used the different ones. For the Easy Soft Corals, I don't notice much of a difference, so it doesn't really matter. I just buy what's affordable. Um, so a bag like this uh, will cost you 20 bucks, something like that, for 50 gallons of water. So this bag will a third first, stir it up, uh, and then we'll check with the hydrometer to see where it's at. Now, salinity, where do we want our salinity? 1.020 to 1.026 for salt water, and specifically for corals, uh, 1.023 to 1.026 is perfect. If you have one of those digital um, 
readers, that's great. Uh, this is just a, a regular one where you scoop the water. You can see it's just got the measurement there. And you scoop the water out of the tank and then the little needle goes up to where it's at. And if the needle doesn't move, it's because there's just not enough salt in there. So you'll just keep adding salt as the needle moves up slowly and slowly. And if, you, if you go too high, too much uh, salt, then you'll have to add some more RODI fresh water to it. You might even have to take some of the water out and then add more fresh water. So it's better to go ahead and start with less salt. So even though we figure half the bag, rather than add half the bag and calculate it incorrectly because of the sand and the rock that's in there, uh, I would rather start off with maybe one third of the bag of salt to mix in. And then from there, I'll just keep adding maybe a scoop of salt, a couple scoops, and see where, where I'm at. And once it starts moving up, you know, once you get on to the range, then you don't need like a ton of more salt to start moving that needle up. Uh, but before that, uh, it's like 1.0 I think is the beginning. Before that, um, it takes quite a bit of salt before that, that needle starts moving. I think the bags have it all the instructions on there. Um, just go buy whatever brand you buy and it'll tell you how much salt, you know, per gallon of water. Okay, um, so it is running, the heater's in there, so the temperature should be good. We're gonna get a digital thermometer and check it, make sure it's, you know, uh, mid to high 70s. Okay, so here we are. I'm um, gonna put the salt in, just have a little container. This is, it ended up being a resealable bag, so we can go ahead and scoop a reasonable amount of salt like that and just toss it in there, put it by the filter, it'll shoot it around. And then after we put, a few scoops in, we're just going to stir it, okay? So, okay, here we are. So the tank is set up with water. Uh, we tested the salinity, the temperature. Uh, it was the power head we added. Uh, it's probably a little too powerful. Uh, I'm going to probably put it back into the 40 breeder and put a smaller power head in here. But for now, I just wanted you to see it uh, with just one set of lights. And you can see I just put in the pixie dust, Pally's. It's hard to see, I know, with this lighting and then over here they're starting to open up um, another uh, zoanthid uh, which is pretty cool and then you'll notice over here um, with the plugs in it is going to look natural i've got another one with zoanthids on it that's growing over it which i'm going to put in in a little bit but that one is an empty one so it's ready for when i get any more frags i can put them in there um, okay so this the salinity got set to 1.025 and uh, they don't have we don't have the skimmer the skimmer I put the backpack skimmer on so you can see it it's right there cleaned it up um, so it's ready to go got to fill up the water level a little bit more before I can turn it on but in the first in the first uh, month or two don't really need the skimmer um, because there's really nothing in there but like we might I might turn the skimmer on because we use this sand Sand had a little debris in it. It's really hard to get sand uh, clean no matter what. You take it out of an aquarium, you rinse it, you rinse it, you rinse it through the bucket, and still uh, there's going to be some stuff there. So I might try to skim off and see if anything comes out. If nothing comes out, then we're really not worried about it. I have this canister filter set up below. If you can see that, there you go. There's the canister filter, and that one, it's a Flupel 305. It's plenty of power for this 40 cube, and it's it's got you know carbon in it for now which I will take out eventually. Um, I put the carbon in, it's reef carbon by the way, I'll put the reef carbon back in and out depending on how much, um, if I if I need it to, uh, you know, because that's your water purifier, it keeps the water clean. If I, if I do like a heavy feeding or something like that, or it's just like uh, I've, you know, lacked in water changes or the, for some reason the tank gets cloudy, then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that power, that uh, canister filter's on with at plenty of activated carbon, probably fresh activated carbon, or even after treatments, if you ever treat things that it tells you to put activated carbon in, then I have that canister filter and then the ability to do so. In the backpack skimmer though, I also run activated carbon and the water gently flows over that, unlike the canister filter, uh, which uh, still works. Um, so I can run pads back there. I used to run pads back there to take out heavy metals and other things. They make pads like that you can cut and put it really anywhere in any filter. So I can do that in the canister and I can also do that on the backpack skimmer. So the tank is set up for now until we're gonna get ready to go ahead and move over these corals. So you're gonna see these guys right here. Here and a couple of fish are in there and those guys are gonna get moved over to this tank. Okay, so that's our 40 gallon soft coral reef tank.